A man runs at constant speed to catch a bus. At the instant the man is 40 metres from the bus, it begins to accelerate uniformly from rest away from him. So, here is a picture of the situation when t equals 0. So the timer is set to 0 at the instant the man is 40 metres from the bus. Actually from the back of the bus, we'd say the door is at the back of the bus. So the man is running with a constant speed um. The m refers to the man. And he's, that means his acceleration is zero. Um, the initial speed of the bus at this instant is zero, because the bus is just starting to move. It's accelerating uniformly from rest. And I'm calling the acceleration of the bus A sub B. The man just catches the bus 20 seconds later. So here's a picture of the situation at t equals 20. That's 20 seconds later. We see that the man has just reached the bus, so the distance of the man from the starting point, which is denoted S sub M, equals the distance of the bus S sub B from the starting point 0. The speed of the man is still UM, because he's moving with constant speed. The acceleration of the bus is AB hasn't changed, it's uniform acceleration like in all these problems. However, the speed of the bus now has increased from ub equals 0 to some value vb, which we don't know. In the first question, we want to find the constant speed of the man. We want to find um. Now, here's our distance formula for connecting the quantities s, u, t, and a. So those are the quantities of interest. So let's look at sm. Well, that's just um times t plus a half am times t squared. And we're interested in the position of the man when t is equal to 20. So if we plug 20 into this formula, we get um times 20 plus a half times am. Well, am is 0 because the man is moving with constant speed. So this is just 20 times um. We didn't even have to use this formula. This is just an example of distance traveled being constant speed, or sorry, time multiply by constant speed. Um, it's just a variation of speed equals distance over time when we're talking about constant speed. Otherwise we'd be talking about average speed and this formula wouldn't apply, but since the speed is constant it's just distance equals speed by time. So that's the distance the man has traveled when he just catches the bus at t equals 20. And we do the same now for SB. So, what's the initial speed of the bus? Well, that's zero. So at t equals zero, we're interested in the initial speed. However, there's one thing we have to add on to this formula, and that's 40. Because when t is zero, these terms will go out. But we want the initial position of the bus to be 40. That's what we have at t equals zero. The bus is 40 meters away from the origin. So you must add on 40 here. So, we plug in 20 for t, so we have ub times 20. Well, ub is 0, the initial speed of the bus is 0. <coughs> plus a half, ab times 20 squared, plus 40. So that's the position of the bus at t equals 20. And of course, these two have to be equal. SM must, we want sm to equal sb. Here we have... 20 squared is 400, divided by 2 is 200. We have 200 AB plus 40 equals 20 times UM. And we can simplify that equation down a bit. We can divide it, all of this by 20. So here we get the relation between the acceleration of the bus AB and the initial speed of the man UM. 10 AB plus 2 equals UM. So you can see for the man to reach the bus, we have an infinite number of solutions. We have infinite number of values of AB and UM just as long as they satisfy this equation. Then the man will actually catch up with the bus. However, in this question, we're interested in the man just catching the bus. And that's a little, that puts restrictions on, on the values of AB and UM, which I'll explain soon. So this is quite a subtle point, so I'll spend some time discussing the different ways in which the man can reach the bus. 
we're interested in the man just catching the bus. Let's consider the three possibilities for when the man reaches the back of the bus. So we're assuming now that the man has not yet, this, this is the first time that the man reaches the back of this bus where the door is so he can hop on. One possibility is that at that instant, his speed UM is less than the speed VB of the bus. Now I'm going to show that this possibility, well, is impossible. This is not a possibility. If it's not obvious to you, you, we, you could assume that if UM is less than VB, say UM is 10 meters per second. And let's say VB is 10.1 meters per second. So you can see that UM is less than VB at the instant the man reaches the bus. But if that was the situation, that means that sometime earlier, the bus, because it's accelerating, had a lower speed. So it had a lower speed of 10 meters per second. And at that earlier time, the man hadn't yet reached the back of the bus. The man might be somewhere here. So this is a, some time before this t equals 20. It might be t equals 19.5 or something. So here we have a situation where t is less than 20. So the speed of the bus is less than it was when t equals 20. It was 10.1 when t equals 20. But because the bus has been ex is accelerating, its speed at some time less than 20 is going to be something like, let's say it's 10. Well, the man's speed is always 10. We're saying that the man's speed is 10, and he's moving at constant speed. So you can see that the man cannot actually catch the bus. If the man's speed is 10 and the bus's speed is 10, well, there's always this gap here. And the bus is accelerating, remember, so the bus is going to move further and further away. So this situation here is impossible. It's impossible for the man's speed to be less than the bus's speed when the man first reaches the back of the bus. Now let's con consider the situation at t equals 20. These, all these situations occur when t equals 20, when the speed of the man is greater than the speed of the bus. Okay, so the man has just reached the back of the bus and his speed is greater than the speed of the bus. That means that the man will temporarily overtake the bus. But that's only temporary because the bus is accelerating. The man is going at a constant speed. Let's say he's going at a speed of 10. Because the bus is accelerating, the bus will catch up with the man. So this is a way for the man to reach the bus, but this is not what we want. Because what we want is the situation where the man just catches the bus. So there's one other possibility for the relation between UM and VB. And that possibility is that UM equals VB. So it can either be less than VB, greater than VB, or equal to VB. There's no other possibility. So in this situation where UM equals VB, the speed of the man equals the speed of the bus. The man will not overtake the bus. The man will just reach the bus. Now, the man will just reach the bus, and he must hop on at that instant when he reaches the bus, because if he doesn't, the bus will over continue on accelerating. So at that instant, UB, UM, and VB might be 10 meters per second. But the next instant, because the bus is accelerating, the speed VB will increase, might go up to whatever. It'll start increasing the man will um, fall behind the bus. So for that split instant, when UM equals VB, the man just reaches the bus and he must hop on at that instant. So this is something that we have to take into consideration. So we can't just write this down. We have infinite number of solutions for this equation here from the first part. We must include this here, UM equals VB. So I'll write it up here, UM equals VB. So UM, we don't know what that is, but VB, well, we know that V equals U plus AT. So the final speed of the bus is the initial speed of the bus plus the acceleration of the bus times T, where T is 20. The initial speed of the bus is zero. We have the acceleration of the bus times 20. 
So we have UM equals 20AB. So we have two equations and two unknowns. And we can solve for them to get specific values of AB and UM that satisfy both of these equations simultaneously. So we just solve between these. We have 10 times AB. Well, I've written AB in terms of UM here. AB is UM divided by 20. So I plug UM divided by 20 in for AB. So we have 10 times UM over 20. That's a half UM. And if I bring the half UM to the right-hand side, I get 1 UM minus a half UM. 1 UM minus a half UM is a half UM. So a half UM equals 2, or UM equals 2 divided by a half, which is 4. So with UM equals 4, we can calculate AB. AB is uh, UM divided by 20. So it's 4 divided by 20. That's 2 divided by 10, which is 0 0.2 meters per second squared. Part 2. If the constant speed of the man had instead been 3 meters per second, show that the closest he gets to the bus is 17.5 meters. So I've changed UM to 3. The constant speed of the man is 3. The acceleration of the bus we now know from the part 1, we know it's 0 0.2 meters per second squared. So this is the situation at t equals 0. The bus is just is at rest. Its initial speed is 0. This is a, its acceleration. At t equals 20, the man has moved some distance. His new position is SM. Um, and the position of, of the bus is SB. Actually, this doesn't have to be 20 seconds. We have to show that the closest he gets to the bus is 17.5 meters. So apparently he doesn't actually reach the bus. So at some time, which we don't know, the man, uh, the man's distance from the bus is is the closest it can be. So this is some time t later. What I can do is calculate the velocity of the bus in terms of that time. Using this here, VB equals UB plus AB times T. We know that AB is 0.2, UB is 0, so VB equals 0.2T. We're interested in the distance between the man and the bus at some time T. So, the distance from 0 to the bus is SB, the distance from 0 to the man is SM. So if we take SB and subtract SM, we get the distance between them. What is SB? SB is the distance of the bus from zero. But at t equals zero, the bus was already 40 meters ahead. Ahead of the origin, at t equals zero. So that is if we put zero in here, these two terms will go out and we just get SB equals 40. So we just have to add 40 onto our formula for S. We have to subtract from SB, SM. SM is UMT plus a half AMT squared. UB, the initial speed of the bus is zero, so that goes out. The acceleration of the bus is 0.2, so we have a half times 0.2 is 0.1 T squared. And I have the 40 here, of course. And we subtract the dis distance SM of the man. His initial speed is 3, and that's constant, so it's minus 3 T. His acceleration is zero. So, this here gives us the distance between the man and the bus at any time t. But we're interested in the value of t which will minimize this expression. So how do we minimize this expression here? How do we minimize sb minus sm? Well, we could look at a graph of it and um, work it from there, but I'm going to use differentiation. So we set the derivative of the distance sb minus sm equal to zero. That's how we find the minimum value of a function. If we differentiate 40, we get zero. Differentiate 0.1t squared, we get two times 0.1, which is 0.2t. Differentiating minus 3t with respect to t gives minus 3. Solve this equation. t equals 3 divided by 0.2, uh, which is 30 divided by 2, which is 15. So at 15 seconds, we have the minimum distance. So I just want to quickly draw the graph SB minus SM. And to find the actual closest distance, that's the actual value of SB minus SM, we just plug T back in, the value of T we got back into this here. 
So 40 plus 0.1 by 15 squared minus 3 times 15 gives 17.5 meters. Uh, this thing here is a quadratic function. It's got the shape of a parabola. So it would look like this. We'd have a turning point where t equals 15. Uh, the y-axis here is sb minus sm. So the corresponding value here is 17.5. So when t is 15 seconds, sb minus sm is 17.5 meters. 